<laughs> Imagine being this brood mother. Imagine being this behemoth, training your whole life to fend off some loser who got messed up in an electrical storm and then got superpowers, and you get deleted in 30 seconds in front of your entire crew. Get wrecked, son! In this video, we're going to cover two different builds that are essentially two variations of the same setup. The first one will be the most impractical. You are going to die. You are using the Perpetua Mobile Bug, and you do insane damage. Good luck, but it is certainly fun if you can make it work. And the second one is going to be an actual realistic firepower build on the Technomancer, which you can use with no bugs and plenty of defense so you don't get murked right away. In this video, we will cover the class tree of these setups, the skills used, and of course, the gear to make it work. If during the course of this video you like it, I make you laugh, I make you cry, feel free to click that like button, click that comment button. I love talking with you friendly folks. Click that subscribe button. Let's get it. On our first setup for the pros and cons, uh, this damage is unbelievable. <laughs> 1.6 million damage critical hits with a submachine gun is truly ridiculous. I like counting the seconds to kill the brood mothers when I am doing these videos just as a frame of reference. Didn't even try on this one because they melted so fast. I think you get the point. It is absolutely astounding damage and i love it obviously the fatal symbiont is my favorite gun in the game i've mentioned that before and that is definitely being used in this first setup the damage is ridiculous and you hold down the trigger and things disappear with your blistering rate of fire you are incredibly cool looking i look like some sort of cowboy i don't even really know but i I think I look pretty dope with this <laughs> with this ensemble. There are a lot of cons though. Uh yeah. So let's talk about the bad things of this first setup. So you're going to die all the time. You're gonna die <laughs> excessively. This is more of an exercise on how we could get the absolute most out of the Pyromancer and their volcanic rounds. On this setup, we have absolutely zero defense, we have zero max health, we have zero resistance, and uh <laughs> oh, you feel it, especially with that dark sacrifice. I got one tapped by alphas with that said though if you can just not die <laughs> this is one of the most fun setups in the game not easy to do but uh you know dancing on that knife blade i like to say when you're trying to make sure you can live it does slow your times down a little bit because you are really really actively trying to not die at all costs it's very intense and i would say this is a sort of like a gamer fuel type of build you need that g fuel to be on your peak senses otherwise you're gonna get murked and you're not gonna complete any expeditions trust me i would know i died an absolute metric ass ton just to get a couple good runs to use for footage we will discuss a viable build after i show you how this first one works with actual defense armor and some resistance in a way that makes it still fun to play with much less damage unfortunately womp womp but actual survivability. Let's get into it. Skills used will be the Volcanic Rounds, aka the linchpin of this entire setup. Feed the Flames and our Ash Blast. We get bonus damage every time we use our Ash Blast, every time we use our Feed the Flame, and our Volcanic Rounds penetrate armor and resistance so they just shred through enemies. The only interesting part of this class tree, because it's very obvious as soon as you look at it that every single part of this <laughs> is spec'd out for damage, I would say you have a choice with one node. You can either put it into max health, you can put it into another armor piercing node, which is helpful, not because we need armor pierce, but because we are using a mod, which gives us more critical damage based on our armor piercing. Or you can put it into that very top class node to give you more life leech from your weaponry after you use an immobilization skill. Seeing as you spam your immobilization skills of Feed the Flame and Ash Blast pretty much on cooldown, the extra weapon life leech is very handy indeed. I elected to go for more health because really, I cannot emphasize this enough, you are absolutely going to die, <laughs> so might as well get a little bit of help from a little bit of max health. As the class tree and the skills used for both setups are exactly the same, let's go over two different sets of gear here. We're going to start off with the completely practical nearly impossible one to use but when it works my god i think it may be the most fun you could possibly have in this game besides possibly the edge of time trickster set build i really love that other than that though this is it for me for our weapon we are using the fatal symbiont i have a sick roll it is fantastic dark sacrifice killing spree oh it's so fun i love it we are absolutely abusing the perpetual mobile bug on this setup because we're cheating. We're not actually using Feed the Flames to get our ammo back. Oh, we'll talk about that more in the second setup. There's a link to the Perpetuum Mobile Bug down below if you want to see how to do that. It's very helpful for this, especially because our entire build <laughs> pretty much relies on it. For our secondary, we don't really have one. We don't need one. You could choose to run the Wicker here with the Tier 3 Ash mod on that plus Dark Sacrifice. We absolutely get more damage from Fatal Symbiont with Killing Spree and Dark Sacrifice 
but the addition of Ash on the Wicker does play to our strengths and our class tree from our bonus damage to Ash. And you do get more crowd control, but I don't really think you need it. Anything you shoot with a Fatal Symbiont just dies immediately. On our helm, we are using Tanner's Hat. A, because you look dope as hell, and B, because it is exactly the attributes we need. Bonus firepower, close range damage, and cooldown reduction. We want cooldown because we want our Ash Blast to come back as quickly as possible. You're going to see only offensive mods with this setup, obviously, because we're going crazy, bro. We got Stare into the Barrel that comes on that hat. Beautiful when we are in close, which we always are. That's the goal. And Captain Hunter to melt those elites. On our jacket, we don't have the attributes we want, which is a recurring theme because grinding for purple gear in this game can sometimes be as difficult as finding that dope legendary hat you've been grinding 5,000 hours for. So just bear with me and remember, bonus firepower, close range damage, and cooldown is what we want. We need Death Sentence. It is one of the best mods in the game. Your firepower just flies through the roof when you pop your Ash Blast. It's ridiculous. And I cannot believe in the next patch they're buffing this mod. And obviously we want Dum Dum Bullets. Chose to put it here. Spawns a lot of different places because we do want that 10% buff to our assault weapon damage. Let's take a quick peek at our pantalones here. We got the awesome long range close range, which doesn't really do anything because <laughs> our gun doesn't reach long range, but that's okay. Bullet kindling, obviously we want to buff our damage against enemies which are on fire as that is pretty much everything all the time and crit stack because we want critical hits to make our firepower go up even more gloves we have sharp eye and plate piercer pretty self-explanatory sharp eye is beautiful aiming down the sights buffs your firepower when you get kills plate piercer is why we wanted armor piercing nodes in our class tree because we just want more critical damage we have armor pierce on the fatal symbiont so we get a nice meaty 20 percent buff to our critical damage finally for our feet we have bloodlust and ashen boost this is what i found to be the ultimate elite melting setup Ashen boost means that when we use our fuck you move <laughs> of Ash Blast or Feed the Flame on an elite, not only are they taking all the buffs from our vulnerable, from our class tree, our elite bonus damage, our ridiculous damage on our gun, but they're also taking bonus damage from our class tree from the Ash plus this 20%. It is disgusting. And Bloodlust is tried and true. You always want Bloodlust pretty much on any firepower build. You don't even have to aim to activate the bonus. It lasts for 10 seconds, stacks three times. All right, all right, but you say made, bro. Didn't you say you're going to die with that setup? Yeah, it's uh, all the time. I have... <laughs> <laughs> two and a half hours worth of footage to prove it if you don't believe me but like i said it's unbelievably fun unrealistic fun it's a trade-off you can choose to make the cool thing is with the second setup i'm going to show you right now you can pick and choose how much defense you want there are a lot of things you can work in so you're not squishy at the cost of trading off damage for this setup you will see chem plant footage where i do not use the perpetual mobile bug you can tell because i don't ever get rounds back unless it's coming from feed the flame for our weaponry we do not want to use the beautiful full automatic submachine guns it is impossible at least in my humble opinion to keep your volcanic rounds up forever using only the legit way aka feed the flame getting ammo back on a full automatic submachine gun your rounds per minute are simply too high you blow through the entire clip before your feed the flame comes off of cooldown so it doesn't really work that's okay though the submachine gun tactic variants are absolutely perfect for what we need i chose to run the demio which is perfect it's got a nice single target damage mod on there as ultimate storm whip and we put dark sacrifice on it to make it work even better the cool thing is this gun has critical damage instead of armor pierce this is nice because with this setup we simply can't afford to run the mod which buffs our crit damage based on our armor piercing in this slot though you can really run whatever you want i've shown another submachine gun which i think is good would prefer to have death chains on the second slot plus dark sacrifice on the first slot with close range damage crit damage and healing received or skills life leech doesn't really matter this is going to do more damage the demio i had it's pretty it works so i chose to use it i need to take a second and really just highlight how <laughs> how hideous this chick is in this setup i really it got to the point where <laughs> I just said, fuck it. Let's just put on the ugliest gear we can find. So I do have gear with attributes <laughs> that are better. But bro, this this is this is easily the ugliest character setup I've ever ever made in this game. <laughs> and I would just that helmet is just appalling. <laughs> okay anyway sorry so we have our uh, <laughs> our first damage compromise here we have death sentence which we previously used but now we're running mitigation from death because we need that armor Amy down sight kills give you a ton of armor it is mandatory if you want to play maps like chem plant otherwise you're going to get melted from long range weaponry spam chest piece you are going to see more compromises this is bullet absorption we need our ammo back that's why we have the tier one on there feed the flames is going to give us 33 percent of our ammo which is being buffed to 40 percent of our ammo in the next patch whenever that drops 
Ramos, and obviously Captain Hunter on the second slot. Our second pair of pantalones is going to be Flame Grasper. We need two additional targets being absorbed by Feed the Flames. We do this so that we can get 99% of our ammo back in our mag from Feed the Flames. This is how we keep our volcanic rounds up all the time, and why we need to use a tactical variant of the submachine gun to refill our rounds solely based on this skill. Dum Dum Bullets spawns here on pants and I think on gloves, so you can work this in in other places, but we do want that 10% buff to our assault weapon damage. Gloves, we have Sharp Eye and Bullet Kindling. Nothing crazy here. These are both damage mods we want. We kept them from our previous setup. And the final piece of the puzzle is going to be our boots, and we have Bloodlust and Ashen Boost. Instead of Ashen Boost, I would prefer to have... Maybe even rejuvenation here, because even with damage mitigation from our helm, we are still fairly squishy. In this slot, damage absorber absolutely can spawn. So if you find that you're getting wrecked out there, even with damage mitigation and the compromises you've made, ditch Ashen Boost before you ditch anything else and pick up either damage absorber, Mark of the Pyromancer. I believe that's the mod for the Pyromancer that gives you both resistance and armor based on gun kills or rejuvenation. All of these are great ways to buff your tankiness if you find yourself getting raffle stomped. That about does it for the infantry information you might need to make either the best or the worst <laughs> pyromancer volcanic ground build in history feel free to click that like button that comment button i love chatting with you fine folks even when you're not so fine and you want to tell me how shit i am <laughs> and uh consider subscribing and coming back and get a second helping of made bro for my closing thoughts until they fix the perpetual mobile bug, I am going to abuse the ever-living hell out of it. It is simply too fun to use the Fatal Symbiont on rounds-based builds without having to pay any of the costs associated with that. You just get your rounds back. It is an incredibly broken bug. It's going to get fixed eventually, and until that time, you might as well have some fun doing it. Certainly what I did with that first setup. I don't regret it at all. Giggling like a small child holding down the trigger. Pretty much the trademark of this channel. And if you can try it and get some kills and have fun melting brood mothers, I think you won't regret it either. Make sure you don't die if you're actually playing in the Challenge Tier 15 Expeditions, particularly if you're with randoms and you don't expect them to carry you. Otherwise, you might find yourself in a video where they're complaining about how bad you are. <laughs> All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, we out.